I'm gonna build some uh, gate column caps. So out of these uh, scrap pieces of plywood. So we got a couple of these cap, not the cap. The cap's gonna be out of concrete. So we're just building the form for it. So these are gonna be, there's gonna be four of these. So they'll go like this. They're gonna be upside down with a form and they'll slightly slope so that the top of the cap goes on an angle so it slopes all the water off the top of it. So we're gonna pour them in the upside down position. I'm gonna try to draw a picture of the, what this column's gonna look like. So we got, we got a column here. So we got 32 inches from here to here. And then it's approximately four feet tall, but that doesn't matter for the size of the cap here. So we want it to, we're gonna, we're gonna put some stone on the outside of this column. So what we gotta do is, like here's the, here's the top edge of the cap, right here and here. So you got, you gotta add two inches for the stone, and then two inches on this side, and then you've got, to have at least a one inch overhang so that the water drips out here and doesn't run back down the side of the stone. And then over on this side, we want it to hang over an inch. So you gotta do 32 inches plus your two, plus your two here, and then one, up, one inch overhang on this side, one inch overhang on this side. So your cap needs to be 38 inches wide. So you got, so that the edge of your cap is 38 inches wide. So it hangs over the edge of your stone. And the reason we're building this before we're doing the column is because we have to dig down right here underneath the column, 32 inches to frost depth for a footing right here. So we're gonna have a footing under the ground that's 32 inches deep into the dirt. So that's our frost depth. So what we're gonna do is pour this concrete and these caps at the same time. The molds will be sitting out on the ground and then we'll pour them while we're doing the footing. Then we'll frame this up, stone it, and then by then these caps will be hard enough to throw on the top of it so that it doesn't uh, waste your time trying to do the caps later and giving it to a couple of days to cure. So you can pour them with the footing, leave them out on the ground, to cure and then you and then you're good to go okay I've already marked this and it's 38 inches wide from from this mark over to that side so I've got 38 inches on my width so that's the size of my cap and I've got it marked out and I'm gonna just cut it off Just using the piece that I barely marked out as a template. Just mark it. It's exactly the same size, so just flip it like that and use this same board. Just hold it like this mark here, just hold a blade width over so that when you cut down that, it stays the same size. It'll get you your maximum use out of your plywood. Kind of expensive right now. Plywood's like 50 bucks a sheet. So sometimes you get tight.
Okay, we got a couple of pallets laid down here. You don't have to build these on a pallet. I'm just going to do it because I might have to move them after I pour them. So I'm going to just put them on a pallet because I've got a skid steer. I can move them around. So you don't have to build these like that. You could just put a piece of plywood under it or something. You just need to have a support right here in the middle. So you gotta have something underneath that to hold all those pieces so that they stay flush right here. So what we're gonna do is cut up this old junky two by four and put it around the perimeter so that it holds this up an inch and a half all the way around it so that it has an inch and a half of slope from right here to right here. That way the cap will shed water off the top of it. Whatever the width of your column is, that determines halfway between is basically the size that you cut this piece of plywood. So from right here to right here, then it's just halfway across. So if you have a piece of plywood, I just use scraps, so I cut it out of several different pieces. But if you have a piece of plywood, all you gotta do is just cut it like that and you're done. Okay, I ended up uh, cutting all these into two by twos because this thing sloping too much kind of makes it teeter a little bit weird with a whole two before coming in like this far. So I cut them in half, all these two befores in half. And then I'm gonna put them on a 45. I'm gonna cut these off on a 45 so that it'll hold up on the joint and it can tweak if it needs to just slightly. screw this down right to the pallet so that it doesn't move around. Okay, there's the form. We just got a, there's a few cracks like this piece of plywood got the corner broke off of it. So I'm gonna fill that in with caulk. It's probably not 100% necessary, but there's a couple of little gaps that I was just using uh, scrap junk plywood. So there's kind of crooked cuts on it, but it'll work. You don't have to use uh, scrap junk plywood like I did, but this, this will still work. It'll look nice when we're done. So I'm going to caulk a couple of these holes like that one. Got my two befores marked for my next for my next column cap form. So we got this one all done. Ready to start on this next one. Cut these two by twos, throw them around the perimeter, and screw them down. One of 
the ways that you can make it so it doesn't just split this out is you get your, get your screw started like that, put it in reverse, and then just back it out, and then just force it down while it's in reverse. And it kind of pilots you a hole if you don't have a pilot bit right handy it just makes it a little bit less chasing if you don't have it right there okay so we have the tube of two around the perimeter it goes down and touches so that's an inch and a half a slope so the scat's upside down, so it'll be like an inch and a half crown to the peak of it. And then we'll form the perimeter with a two by six, like we did that one. And uh, that'll give you three and a half inches from here to the top. So you have a three and a half inch thick cap. So it'll be pretty heavy with this size. We'll probably have to set them with a the skid steer. Okay, these are ready to take to our job site. So we've got our inch and a half slope from here to the peak of the cap. We've got about three and a quarter tall, not quite three and a half, but close enough. So we're gonna haul those over there. We'll get some rebar and put some rebar in there, or else some wire mesh, whatever we can, whatever we got access to. So we'll throw that in there and then we're ready to pour them. The one thing you want to make sure is you don't staple it here and then not have it enough length before you staple it on this side. So give yourself plenty of length to, before you staple it. All these wrinkles right here will just be part of the texture. These all poured, They're all settled into place. Uh, on, just as a note, on these corners, make sure your plastic is loose so that that concrete will go down in there. We hammer tackered it to the side, and before we poured, we pulled the we pulled it off so that it could go down into that corner. Otherwise, it'll round your corner real bad if your plastic was too tight and say it pull, pulled too far over on that side then your plastic will hold it and make a big old round corner so you just want it to mold into there another thing is when you're tapping the edges the key to it isn't to just samsonite that thing and just pound hard it's little short taps like this that make it that make it so it'll vibrate in it allows the bubbles to just float to the top on the edges 
but if you just whack it, the concrete folds like this and then goes back against the form. And it'll actually create more bubbles than if you just didn't even do it. So you just tap it really lightly like that. 